What is going on guys, my name is Kevin, and today I wanted to bring you guys a review of the Samsung Galaxy A70. Now I picked up this mid-range smartphone over a month ago for under $400 US. Now that's even cheaper than the Pixel 3a. These newer Galaxy A series phones went under a lot of people's radar and there isn't a ton of coverage, so I'm going to be addressing and answering any questions you might have about it. We're going to go over all my experiences in that month with the phone and also compare it to high-end flagships and also other mid-range phones. So let's see if this is the device for you. Starting off, I want to go over some of the main features of the Galaxy A70. Samsung has packed in both an on-screen fingerprint scanner and face unlock, the headphone jack, USB-C, even NFC for Samsung Pay, and a triple camera setup. On paper, the specs are also very promising with 6GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage which can be expanded via the micro SD card slot. Now of course we'll go over how these individual features perform, but first up is the display. The A70 is rocking a 6.7 inch AMOLED panel at 20 by 9 ratio which is 393 pixels per inch. Now I've been accustomed to these larger phones like the OnePlus 7 Pro, the Pixel 3 XL, and even the S10 Plus. Coming from those devices and using this as my daily driver, well, I don't really feel like I'm missing that much. By default, the device is set to vivid display mode, which looks a bit weird to me. It was one of the first settings I changed on top of expanding the icon grid to 5x5, changing those navigation buttons, and just for good measure to save battery life and make the phone faster, I went into advanced settings and turned on the reduce motion setting. Looking at the phone on the home screen, and even when you're watching movies, there's really no complaints about this panel, even though it's 1080p. Like the Galaxy S and Note series phones, brightness is impressive, and viewing angles here on the Samsung panels are top notch. Speaking about notch, that teardrop on the top of the screen is actually a pretty nice touch for a phone of this price range. I mean, from the front, it sure does make the phone feel and look a lot more premium than something like the Pixel 3a. As I mentioned before, there's a headphone jack on the bottom as well as a USB-C port, and to the right of that is the loudspeaker. These speakers are better than what's on any other phone I've tested in this price range, but it's worth noting that the front earpiece is not actually a loudspeaker, so you could easily muffle up and ruin the sound experience if your finger is covering up that bottom. On the right of the phone, we have the super tactile and clicky volume buttons and power switch. Then on the left, there is a SIM card tray which doubles as a micro SD card slot. The Galaxy A70 comes in a variety of different colors, of which I chose black because that gradient rainbow effect just gets me every single time. The back plastic just does not hold up well against oil marks and it does pick up fingerprints as expected, so a clear TPU case would not be a bad idea. The pros of going with this material choice is that it's very lightweight and it makes the phone comfortable to hold in the hand. Unboxing experience here is honestly the most underwhelming part of the purchase. I had two of these phones, the first version I picked up from Best Buy didn't even come with earbuds, just an instruction booklet and a SIM eject tool, but the included fast charger at 3 amps is a fast one. It charges up the 4500mAh battery from 0 to 40% in just half an hour. That makes it even faster to charge than the Galaxy S10. The second unit I purchased was from Amazon and it actually came with a free 128GB microSD card, the same fast charger, and earbuds, but not every device will ship with these, so make sure to check the package contents on the listing if you are going to buy this phone. Now let's get straight into the performance. The Samsung Galaxy A70 is packing a Snapdragon 675 and the Adreno 612 chipset, which is actually the exact same chipset that Vivo used in the V15 Pro. There's actually a lot of similarities between these two phones, but the main differences, besides the design, is that the A70 is a lot more globally available, and also it's a little bit cheaper. As far as that chipset goes with this device, I have been really pleased with everyday performance. It runs Android 9 Pie with Samsung's One UI, which has of course been toned down over the years, and we're seeing a lot less bloatware than what we used to see on older Galaxy phones. I have not encountered any lag or hiccups, but it's no flagship phone, so graphically intensive games like Modern Strike Online and PUBG are best played at medium settings. Now really cranking up those graphic settings in some games will result in lag, but thankfully I can report app crashing has not been a problem at all. What the phone has best proven to me is that it's power efficient, and that really shows with my day to day use, easily getting through a full day on a single charge, and if you really tone down those settings we talked about earlier, you can get a second day, it's doable. On a whole other note, a software feature worth talking about is Dolby Atmos. This is a setting that you can enable when the headphones are plugged in and really what this does is noticeably boost up the DAC's performance and enhance the listening experience. The inclusion of the headphone jack is very welcomed here with the mid-range to budget phones because odds are if you're buying one of these phones you're not going to want to ball out on a pair of really expensive wireless earbuds and the listening experience through the DAC, like I said, is pretty good. 
Okay, now let's talk about some cons that you will have to overlook if you are making this purchase. The two biggest cons for me are no wireless charging and no IP rating, and that means likely something is going to go wrong if you do drop it in water. I personally use wireless charging on my iPhone every single day to charge up the phone, and that was one of the drawbacks coming to the Galaxy A70, but I can get over that just because of how fast this charger is compared to any other wireless dock. Now I'm not sure how much of a con this is for you guys, but that on-screen fingerprint scanner being optical as opposed to ultrasonic, like the one on the S10, means it's not going to be quite as accurate. It requires me to place my finger perfectly centered in the middle and hold it there for a bit longer than other high-end sensors. When you nail down that form of exactly how to place your finger and where, it works approximately 8 out of 10 times, but again, slightly slower. Now for that reason, I chose to use face unlock as my preferred authentication method, but inside of apps, you will be required to use that on-screen scanner. The main 32 megapixel camera sensor does a good job with details, sharpness, and colors. I opted to take my photos in 12 megapixel, this way I'm still maintaining the solid HDR processing that Samsung has put into the phone. In most cases, the lower resolution images with HDR actually look better because it does a much better job at automatically setting the background exposure. The overall image quality is quite good, it's not on par with the Pixel 3a, but I wouldn't shy away from posting images and videos taken on here onto social media. The wide array of camera modes that Samsung offers on their flagship phones are also here on the A70, so Pro Mode, Panorama, Hyperlapse, Super Slow Mo, and a Portrait Mode with Background Blur. The quality of image processing does fall short of the flagships as expected, but the fact that the options are here will allow photo enthusiasts to play around with the settings and find something they like. Overall, I think Samsung has delivered a very promising device and a good mid-range competitor to the Google Pixel 3a and other offerings from Vivo, Xiaomi, Huawei, and OnePlus. Where your priorities lie when you're looking for a phone will determine which is the better purchase for you, but with that said, I can definitely recommend the Galaxy A70 to anyone who doesn't need the best camera on a phone, but instead values the high storage capacity and big display which is perfect for watching videos and movies. So that wraps up my review of the Samsung Galaxy A70. I hope I've answered all of your important questions that you might have had about the device. If there's something I didn't touch on, make sure to drop that down below in the comments and I'll hit you back with a reply. The next video is one that you guys do not want to miss, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on for that, and as always, I will talk to you in the next video.